This video gives you an introduction to the Environmental Value Lookup Tool, the EVL tool. In this introduction, I'll explain the structure of the Lookup Tool, and I'll go through an example of how to use the tool. This introduction is meant to complement rather than replace the user guide, so you should aim to look at the user guide once before using the tool for the first time. So when you open the tool, you're directed to the home page, which allows you to navigate the different tabs in the tool. There are six tabs overall. First, you have the user interface, which allows you to select an indicative value. Then you have the detailed results tab, which provides more information about that value. You also have the database tab, which has all of the underlying information that goes into the user interface and detailed results tabs. If you want to aggregate your indicative value, then you can use the aggregation tab. Then there's the biodiversity studies tab, which contains a list of studies that value the impacts of changes in biodiversity. The reason why biodiversity studies are treated separately in the tool is because current evidence doesn't lend itself to being presented and used as indicative values. And then you have the Useful Links tab, which has a list of links to further resources that you may find useful as a user of the tool. This includes links to existing UK government guidance. So now that I've explained the structure of the tool, I'm going to take you through a worked example using the tool. The example I'll be covering is in section 4.7 in the user guide. I'm going to focus on worked example 1, which is about the loss of recreational benefits provided by a woodland site. So to start with, to obtain an indicative value, I need to go to the user interface. So this example deals with an area of woodland that's used for a range of informal recreational activities. There's a proposal to develop the site for a combination of residential and commercial properties, which will result in much of the woodland being removed. So in this context, we can use the tool to get an indicative value for the loss of recreational benefits as a result of this change. So the first step to getting an indicative value is to select the broad habitat that I'm interested in. So I'm interested in a woodland site, which is why I'll select that. And then the second step is to select the environmental impact or good that I'm interested in. And in my case, I'm interested in recreation and tourism, so I'm going to look for that by scrolling to the end of the list and selecting that impact. So this gives me three different types of values, low, central, and high. The unit of these values, which happens to be pound per visit, and an indicative quality rating of that value, which is explained in the user guide. And then at the very end, I have the important considerations that I need to be aware of in using this value. So from these three values, I need to figure out which value applies to my context. To do that, I can go to the Detailed Results tab. So this tab gives me more information about the context-specific factors that influence the value that I've selected. This follows the DEFRA value transfer guidelines. At the very end of this table, there are notes for using the value. And this tells me about what drives the value. So I know from reading this that the low value relates to informal recreation activities, which are the kinds of activities that I said take place in the woodland site that I'm assessing. So this is the value that I'll take forward in aggregating my indicative value. And to do that, I go to the aggregation tab. The first step is to select the indicative value that I want to take forward, which is the low value as we established. Then, within that range of values, I need to pick a specific value. So I'm going to choose four pounds, but you could try different values and see how that impacts the final result in the additional columns that are provided for sensitivity testing. The third step requires me to enter the number of visits to calculate the aggregate value. So in my case, I know that 50,000 people go to this woodland every year, so that's what I'm inputting in the cell. And then the final step in aggregating my indicative value is to select the different parameters for the time period for my analysis. So first I need to enter the year when my impact starts. And for this project that's taking place in this woodland, construction is due to start in 2017. So that's the year I'll select. Then I need to enter the time period for my analysis, which I'm going to choose as 10 years. 
And then I'm going to select the first year of my time horizon, which I'm choosing to be 2015. And then finally, I need to select the unit that I want my valuations to be presented in, which I'm choosing as millions of pounds. So this populates the standard reporting table that I can then copy into my impact assessment, which provides the results that I've obtained using the indicative value that I selected. So in this example, we find that the loss of recreational benefits to local residents and visitors is approximately 1.6 million pounds over a 10-year time horizon, which is equivalent to 200,000 pounds per year in equivalent annual value terms. These results are based on the assumption that all visits to the woodland are lost, so nobody that goes to this woodland will go to another substitute site, which in reality may happen. So in this respect, these results are upper-end estimates for the potential loss of recreational benefits. There are also other potential wider environmental impacts that may arise as a result of this development project. To assess these, I can go back to the user interface and select different impacts to look at further. But first, I need to clear the aggregation tab so that I can do further calculations for other impacts. And the way to clear the aggregation tab is to reset it. And the same can be done in the user interface. Still interested in woodlands as a habitat type, and I can select a variety of different impacts to look further into as a result of the same construction project. So, for example, I can look at biodiversity, and that would require me to go to the detailed results tab to get more information. So, if I scroll to the bottom of the detailed results tab, there is information about the different components of biodiversity value, and there's an instruction to click on this link. So this takes me to the Biodiversity Studies tab, which has a list of studies according to different habitat types, along with a reference number that can be used to find more information about these studies in EVRI, which stands for Environmental Value Reference Inventory. The idea is that I can look for a study that, based on the habitat type that I'm interested in, which happens to be woodland, and find more information about it in the Every database and consider doing more detailed value transfer. So I've gone through a simple example to highlight the evidence and functionality of the tool. In practice, your use of the tool may be a bit more complex, in which case I'd recommend consulting the user guide for further information. Thank you for your time.